Hello Matrix. Welcome to the first of the Grade 12 sections on circles, namely equations of circles. The principles and logic of the pre-Grade 12 sections will be invaluable. With a thorough experience in these sections, formulae and inclination, graph concepts, straight line graphs and quadrilaterals, we are making good progress and will proceed to the first of the four sections on circles, equations. Thereafter, general and standard forms of the equation, a tangent to a circle, points of intersection, and then followed by the toolkit and exam prep. Note the references to the answer series Grade 12 Maths 2-in-1 Study Guide. Keep practicing. Equations of circles. The fundamental concept here is the equation of a graph is a statement which is true for all points on the graph. Let's first consider circles with the origin as center. See the sketch alongside where a point xy could be placed anywhere on the circumference of the circle. We find that true of any point xy on the circle, the square of x plus the square of y is equal to the square of r x squared plus y squared equals r squared by the theorem of Pythagoras. This is the equation of the circle. And all one needs to determine this equation is the radius. For example, if the radius is 5 units, the equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared equal to 25, the square of 5. If the radius is 9 units, the equation is x squared plus y squared equal to 81. Pause while you work through examples 1 to 5. Pause to check your answers on each of the following five slides. Note that concentric circles have the same center, in these cases the origin, and check your answers over here and over here. Pause to check your answers. What do we know if a point lies on a graph? We know that it satisfies the equation. So we substitute. And in A, we substitute the coordinates 3 and P in the equation, and we get P equal to plus or minus 4. But P is negative, we were given, so only P equals minus 4. In B, the same principle, but let's turn the equation around. R squared equal to x squared plus y squared to determine the value of R squared, which is 53. And therefore, the equation is x squared plus y squared equal to 53. Note, the radius itself is the square root of 53. Pause to check your answers to worked example 3, where we have the point A, 4 minus 3, on the edge of the circle. To determine the radius of the circle, we do so either by substitution or by recognizing the 3, 4, 5 triangle. To find the reflections of A in the x-axis, in the origin, and in the y-axis, we are able to determine the coordinates of those points. Check your answers for B, C, and D. And then the axis intercepts. P and R are on the x-axis and therefore must have y equal to 0. And Q and S are on the y-axis and so must have x equal to 0. In worked example 4, to determine the equation of the circle, all we need is the radius, which is square root 13. And therefore the square of the radius is 13, and the equation is x squared plus y squared equal to 13. We find x by substitution, and in C, the axis intercepts. Again, be careful, x equal to naught must be on the y-axis, and y equal to naught, true of points on the x-axis.
In worked example 5, in A, we find the points of intersection of the line and a circle graphically. Simply sketch the graphs and then read off the points of intersection. In B, we do so algebraically by solving the equations. The answers ought to be and are the same, of course. Often, when asked to find the coordinates of a point or points, it means finding the point or points of intersection of two graphs, i.e. solving their equations simultaneously. And now, circles with any given center. Again, true of any point x, y on a circle, this time with center a, b, and radius r, is that x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared is equal to r squared. And this equation is actually the distance formula, but really the theorem of Pythagoras. And therefore this is the equation of a circle with center a, b and radius r. It is the standard form of the equation of all circles. If you are unsure of these horizontal and vertical lengths, pause to examine the in-detail sketch alongside where we see how x minus a and y minus b arise. Pause to do examples 6, 7 and 8. Pause to check your answers. To determine the equation in each case, we need the center and the radius. Each term in these equations is a square because the equation is the theorem of Pythagoras. Pause to check work to examples 7 and 8 which focus on axis intercepts. And we know that x is naught on the y-axis and y is naught on the x-axis. Be sure to have the coordinates correct, especially the zeros, naught as x-coordinates on the y-axis and naught as y-coordinates on the x-axis. Work to example 8. In A, we determine the intercepts algebraically. And in B, we illustrate the points of intersection graphically. Study the working very carefully. Thank you for listening. You are now set to proceed with the next video on standard verse general forms of the equation. Be inspired as logical thought on the fundamentals propels your progress. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.